Well, I can tell by the snickering <laughs> that you've noticed I got a haircut this week, and it's not nice to laugh at somebody when they get a haircut. Now, I, the dry cleaners promised me that my sport coat would be ready by Sunday, but it, it, this is a busy season of the year, so I'm improvising the best I can today. Also, I'm preparing for the possibility that after this gig, I may need to find something else to do. So, I'm thinking reporter for the Weather Channel. Storm reporter, because I know how to pretend it's heavy blowing winds and just tell you it's, it's bad, it's really bad here. I know how to do that. So, I think I'm ready for that. Let me also recommend that Thanksgiving Day, if somebody says, pass the salt, I hope you'll think of me. All right, now, you're wondering why. I'll tell you the why. We've been on farming all this month. November has been a month about farm stories. I needed to get your attention turned somewhere else. And so away from the farming. Because today we're going to talk about the storms of life, Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, the storms of life. We've been in this month talking about stories of Jesus. Stories that Jesus told in the first half of the month as he told parables. Parable about the sower and the seed and the seed growing. And, and so we've been thinking farming, but the last of the chapter... It's not stories told by Jesus, but a story told about Jesus. At the end of the chapter, it's Jesus and the storm. You know that story so well. Jesus and the apostles on an evening cruise on the Sea of Galilee, a storm swoops in, and before you know it, they are in fear for their lives. They think they're going to die. Jesus and the storm. Oh, it's a great story. Let me ask you this, though. Can you imagine what that would feel like? I mean, we're here in eastern North Carolina, surrounded by water. So many of you have boats. You've been out on the water plenty of time. Can you imagine what it's like to be out there and a storm hits and you feel fearful for your life? Anybody been there, done that? Yeah, a few of you got your hands raised. My dad was always into boats. I grew up in Florida, so we always had boats. We were always out there fishing. And Jeanette and I went out with him sometimes, and we got out in the Gulf of Mexico one time. We're out so far, there's no land in sight. That's okay. We're fishing, having a great time, and a storm swooped in. As we're going back, you can't see anything. He's using compass. Jeanette and I are hanging on for dear life. We're hoping, we're praying, and we're promising that we will never go back out with him again in the Gulf of Mexico. It's just too dangerous out there in a small boat. I think I understand what it's like to be in a storm and be in fear for your life. Well, that's the story of Jesus and the storm, and that's what Mark wants to tell us today in Mark chapter 4. Now, that story begins, however, first with a lesson on fatigue, because on this occasion, Jesus is in that boat, sound asleep, because he has had an exhausting day of ministry. That's typical of Jesus and his ministry. His days were long and busy. Jesus would spend hours, we're told in the text, preaching and teaching. And then he'd do hours of the healing and the shaking hands, the touching, the talking with people. His day would be full. And you start to see the human side of Jesus when you appreciate that. You see him, for example, not only doing all the work that was involved in ministry, but then there was the travel. He's having to walk most of the time. And if he is in a boat, it's not an air-conditioned luxury cruise. It's still something that's taxing. Jesus also would sometimes slip across the border into territory that didn't belong to the Jews so he could take a break. He needed a break from ministry. There's times, it says in the text, he went into a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Somebody finds out and he's still busy. Jesus had long, tiring days. And on this occasion, he is so fatigued, he lays down in the boat and even in the midst of a storm, he's sleeping. You know something about that? You know what that feels like to just be worn out? Down here in the south, what do we say? You're worn slap out. And that's what true of Jesus and sometimes true of us as well. Life just runs like that. Sometimes you feel like you're running on empty. You got so much you need to do and you need to stop and take a break, but you just feel like you can. I got so much I need to do and you just keep pressing forward and forward and forward. And you know, life is like that. That's in our jobs or school. It's in our homes with our family activities and our household chores and such as that. And then all the things that you're committed to in the community, at church, we just get busy, busy, and busy. And you know what? This time of year, it gets even worse, doesn't it? See, this week, we're entering into the holiday season. We're going to have Thanksgiving, followed by Christmas, followed by New Year's. And over these next several weeks, we are going to be busy, busy people as much or more than our usual. Now, it's in seasons of busy like this 
that ever so often you'll just have one of those days where you're just exhausted like Jesus was, and you're thinking, I really, 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 I need a rest. I need to just crash and take a break. I need some kind of rest here. Because we get those days when our lives stay busy. That's why as a public service announcement, I want to remind you what you already know. It's just that we get so busy we forget to do it. Let me just remind you about dealing with these next few weeks of the holiday season. First, make the rest times count. That is to say, as you're busy and you're working even into the evening when it comes time for rest, make it a good, strong rest period and get refreshed for the next day. You know what we sometimes do? We're getting into the late evening and, and we're still doing stuff and we think, I need to get to bed, but I need to unwind. I think I'll watch a show or I'll play a computer game. No, no. no. When the bedtime comes, go to bed because morning's going to be there before you know it. And through these next few weeks, we need to do good sleep practice and get good rest because our body can help us get through these tough times as we're feeling it. Don't overcommit. Don't overcommit. Now, let me tell you, some of the busyness isn't your fault. It's, it's beyond your control. Life just simply throws a lot of things our way, and we have responsibilities, and so we're, we're busy. But there are times you and I are busy and tired, and it was a self-inflicted wound. We need to learn how to say no. We need to learn how to say no. I'd love to, but I really can't. We've we got to learn how not to overcommit. Also, I recommend that you're going to stay fueled and hydrated. That is, pr practice some good care of your body. You know what happens? We get so busy, next thing you know, you're grabbing a quick snack here or a quick drive through there or just skipping it all together, and your body at some point, it catches up with you. Stay hydrated and fueled in a proper way. Practice some good habits there, and it'll help you get through this busy season that we're in. Are you getting the idea? If we want to approach these few weeks and, and get through them well, we're going to have to do some smart things on our side. Because it's certainly, it, it's up to us to do that. Let me also recommend you got to take strategic breaks. Here you are, you're doing an activity, you're very intense. That tenses you up, that, that's tiring. Every so often you got to remind yourself, stand up, stretch, take a deep breath. You're going to get right back to it, but those need to be done periodically. you got to walk away and then walk right back and let's get to it, get this thing finished. In other words, in this Christmas season, just be smart. Now you might think then, busy is a bad thing. No, busy is not bad. Fact is, Jesus was busy. That's the way he did his ministry. He was always busy. And, and so busy's good if you've got a lot of good things you're doing. Just be smart, be wise, and you'll get through the season. But now our story moves from fatigue to fear. The fear of a dangerous storm that's come upon them, and those disciples are afraid for their lives. Now, when Mark tells the story, Mark describes it as a furious squall. That sounds bad. He also describes it as they were taking on water. Water was coming into the boat. Now, those men were afraid. Four of those apostles are experienced fishermen by trade, which means they know something about the sea. They know when it's time to be afraid, and the text says, and they were all afraid. This was a dangerous situation they found themselves in. And so it is, they're dealing with a real-life storm and feeling the emotions that come with addressing an issue like that. Now... We go from the real-life storms to the metaphorical storms. Because storms have always been nice imagery for us to describe life. That life ever so often throws storms at us that we have to deal with, we have to endure. You know, Job spoke like that. Job chapter 30, when Job's having his bad day, Job says, Sometimes you feel like that you're a straw just laying there on the ground, and here comes the wind getting ready to blow you away, that you're, that you're the light chaff that comes off the grain. And a storm is just going to scatter you everywhere. Sometimes you feel like that. Or perhaps you remember one of our favorite old songs. It is well with my soul. We love that song. You remember what the line says as it describes both good times and bad. It says, when peace like a river attendeth my way. Or when sorrows like sea billows roll. That's right. Some days are, are good and peaceful. That's great. Some days are not. They're like a storm. And so it is we sometimes speak of those figurative storms. That come into our life. And you know how it works for every one of us in this room. Storms roll in and they'll have their time. And when they fade away and we get a little bit of peace, we know another one's coming. And another one after that, another one after that. That's how life works. And the storms are so varied. That is, whatever your friend is dealing with may be quite different from the thing that you're dealing with. And what kind of things do we have to deal with in the storms of life? Well, sometimes it's relationships, stormy relationships. 
where a relationship is, is, is suffering now? Has it been broken because of feuding and fighting or whatever the case may be? And that can be a stressful thing. Sometimes it's employment. And I talked to someone this morning who said that this week is the time that someone is losing their job. He doesn't enjoy that kind of thing. He's not looking forward to it. He's feeling bad. But you know when that day comes, there's somebody else going to be feeling that storm, the guy that loses his job. Or, or finances. Trying to pay the bills in this month, it is not working. I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. That could be one of the storms of life. There's always the accident. You didn't plan this. You didn't want this, but it happened. Now you're at the hospital dealing with it. There's the disaster. And in the Christmas season, you know, one of the classic disasters is the house fire. Coming from candles or from uh, wiring and a house burns down and somebody's got to deal with that. There's health issues. And the doctor says to you, the reports have come back and we've got options, which translated means this is not good, but we'll do the best we can with it. And you got to deal with that. And then, of course, there's death. And this week in our church family, we've had two deaths. We have that through the year. You see, life brings storms. And each one of us have to deal with the storms that come our way. And thus, we can identify with those apostles in their boat facing a storm and, and, and dealing with the emotions that come with it because that's, that's what life does in so many different ways. It, it brings those kind of trials and tribulations. It brings the storms. Now, let me tell you, one of the times of year that you've got to be especially mindful of is Christmas. I mean, here we are, and people say, happy holidays as they greet you, and this is the most wonderful time of the year. But you do know Christmas has a reputation. The reputation is that Christmas is also the most stressful time of the year for a lot of different reasons. You're thinking, that, how can that be? Because after all, there should be the joy to the world and the joy of the Lord at the birth of Christ. And there is that. Everybody feels that. But there's also more to it. And for a lot of people, happy holidays really does become what Elvis sang about. I'm having a blue, blue Christmas without you. And that really gets to the key of what makes Christmas such a stressful time. You see, with Christmas, oftentimes we've got the ones we're without. Take, for example, the, the family that's gathering and there's somebody who can't be home for Christmas. And that's kind of a sad thing. And maybe you're that person. You can't go home this year for Christmas. And you're feeling that. Sometimes it's those broken and strained relationships and things aren't the way they ought to be around the Christmas table, and that's a sadness. Sometimes it's the busyness, and all you get is just a brief visit because, well, your family's so busy, and you're sitting there longing for more time. I wish I'd gotten more from them. I didn't. And of course, there's those that won't ever be coming back because of death, and each one of us in this room, we have somebody we think about at Christmas time. You're, you're missing them. For me, I think about my father. My wife thinks about her mother. You've got the people you'll think about. You see, Christmas is supposed to be the happy occasion. It is. It's also more than that. It's a time where we sometimes feel the emotions that come with loss. Add to that the stress and the busyness of the season, and it really can wear on you. You know, they say that this is the time of year that things like depression actually go up in numbers. Time of year where suicide attempts can be actually more. It's the time of year to take accounting of and to be prepared to deal with the storms. I think sometimes we may feel like what David says in Psalm 55. In Psalm 55, he says, there are times I wish I had the wings of a dove so I could just fly away somewhere and get some rest and peace. I wish there was a place of refuge I could go to, a refuge from the stormy winds and the tempest. And sometimes we feel like that. I wish there was something I could do to feel better than what I feel like today. I remind you, though, in the story of Jesus and the storm, three words are spoken in our English translations. Those are great words, powerful words. Jesus stood up and he said, peace, be still. I like that. It's so sweet, so simple, so straight to the point, and yet powerful in its own way. Peace be still. And when he spoke those words, the wind and the wave died down and he had calmed the storm. And that wasn't the first time that thing had happened. You see, you can go back to the psalm. Go back to Psalm 107. And David wrote a psalm for sailors. It's a psalm that describes those who take to the sea and the joy of the sea. They love it. It's beautiful. It's peaceful. 
It's, it's great out there. It's where they make their livelihood. And they love it on most days, but then he describes the day when the storm rolls in. Now, on that day, when you're in the midst of a storm out in the open water, it's a different story. And so he comes on down later in the chapter, and he says, now, on those occasions, then they will cry out. They'll cry out to the Lord in their time of trouble to, to deliver us from our distress. And then he says that time and time again, God will. That God will take the storm, and he will bring it still. He'll take the waves, and he will bring them to a hush. You see, the stealing of the storm, the calming of the waves. Oh, God's been in business doing that for a long time, according to the psalmist. And a thousand years later, Jesus will do it on the Sea of Galilee. As he speaks those words, peace, be still, and the storm responds, and he calms the storm. You know, think about that. That's really the person you and I need to be in touch with. We need to be in touch with Jesus so we can enjoy that power he has to calm the storm. Which reminds me of what he said to his apostles on that occasion. He, he calmed the storm and then he turned to him and he says, So, why were you so afraid? Don't you have faith? Now, I understand the afraid. I'm going to defend them there. Out in a boat, out in the open water, or in the sea, and you've got a storm and you're taking on water. I, I think fear would be a natural emotion. That, that's no problem for me. But I think what he's challenging him is this. You let the emotions take control of you. You should have taken control of your emotions. See, the emotions are natural. You feel what you feel. You can't help that. It's do you let your feelings and emotions take charge, or are you going to take charge of them? And that was the key here. You needed to put your faith in me. You know what they should have been thinking? It's a dangerous storm, but we're with Jesus, which means we're going to be okay. We're not going to get in trouble as long as we're with Jesus. And that's really, that's the attitude you and I ought to have. I'm with Jesus, and so I think I'm going to be okay. So that's where we get back to the idea of faith, and a faith that's so strong that I've got confidence I get through this storm, and I'm going to be okay because I'm with Jesus, and we'll be okay. So in those times of storm, and they're coming, they always come, let me remind you the basics. You want to pray. Pray to the Lord who's got a history of calming the storm. Pray for relief. Pray for comfort. Pray for peace. And I believe the promise is word. He bring it. And calm the storm that's in your soul. You, you want to pray. You need to share. You need to figure out who can I talk to, maybe one or more people, that you can just unload and tell them how you feel. And talking is good. Talking is catharsis. It, it gets it out. You want to get people you trust. You trust they're listening. They're not thinking about themselves. They're listening to you. And they know how to be discreet and hold on to something they should hold on to. And maybe they've got some wise words of counsel and advice and encouragement they can share with you. You want to share, because in doing so, it helps you to work through what you're working through. As you're dealing with these storms, you also want to remember that you want to keep your faith strong. You want to keep doing what needs to be done. So as you do that, you want to make sure that, that you're not letting anything get in the way, anything to distract you from putting your faith and confidence in the Lord. Now, what that may require, of course, is that you want to stay with the things that you would normally do. You, you want to hold on tight, for example, even tighter to your faith than you've been doing before. And by that, I mean, sometimes when we are facing the storms of life, we want to pull back. We, we want to break away. This is a good time for more, not less. It's a good time, for example, for more Scripture, not less Scripture. Let the words of God encourage you. More prayer, not less. More of the fellowship and encouragement of the saints. We want to be a part of those kind of things. And as we work through the storms of life, We've got the promise of God, that God is always there, ready to calm the storm in your soul for those who call out to him. Because if you're with Jesus, you're going to be okay. You know, I think about one of the classic songs that's in our hymn book, because it does describe this very thing, a shelter in the time of storm, it's called. Some of you know the chorus, Jesus is a rock at a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. You go through the verses, one of the verses it particularly describes what we've talked about this morning. It, it describes when the raging seas are out there and they're coming around us and they're beating upon us. Yeah, when the raging seas upon us beat, it's with God that we will find a safe retreat. And that's really the lesson I want you to take with you this Christmas season. I want you to remember that life does indeed bring troubles. And, and even in the Christmas holiday season, there's going to be the storms that come our way. But if we're with Jesus, we're okay. And we've got to keep our eyes focused on the Lord, the Lord 
who can calm the storms of our life. 